Hello, and welcome to United Community Bank. This session will be on our business online banking, basic functions. If you direct your browser to the www.ucbi.com, come to the business button section, and then come down here to online and mobile banking. You notice that we have different tabs across showing features, information about mobile banking, various resources that are available, how to enroll, talking about the secure access code, which is used to protect your computer and protect your um, authentication, and your browser requirements. If we come back to the resources tab, we have an e-guide and a business banking online training presentation. There are video tutorials on retail online banking, commercial functions, mobile banking, bill pay, and security, as well as quick reference guides for various features of treasury management. When you open these up, they're a PDF, and they're just one or two pages. They give you a brief overview of how to do each one of these functions. As we sign into the system, we're going to take our cursor up to the login ID, type in your login ID, type in your password, and click login. As we log in, the system is going to be authenticating the login ID and the password, and then providing us with a secure access code. The secure access code is a one-time PIN valid for 15 minutes. It's recommended that you use voice or text and not email. So I'm going to have this sent to my text. And it's a six-digit number that will come through on text fairly quickly. And again, it's only a one-time PIN, and it's valid for 15 minutes. If you're using a computer that you normally use, that is your own computer, you can click Register Device, and it will bypass the one-time PIN the next time. And it will also register your browser on that computer to allow online banking. In this case, I'm going to click Do Not Register Device. And that would be for usually publicly accessed computers or computers that are not specifically yours. Once you get signed in, you can see various accounts that you have, your checking, your savings, money market, loans, and they'll all be right here, available for you on the front page. If I need to look at activity, I will just click on one of my accounts, and it will show me my activity that's been going through the account. If I have checks or debits, such as a deposit slip, I can click here and it'll bring up a copy of the deposit slip. Same thing, if I click here, it will bring up a copy of the check. I can see both the front and the back of the check. And if I click More Details, it will give me more details about the deposit, including the items deposited. Scrolling back up to the top, if I wanted to filter transactions and search for certain kinds of transactions. I can look through a time period. I can do a transaction type. I can do a dollar amount, minimum or maximum. And I can do a check number. I can do a single check number or I can do a range. So for example, if I wanted to find every check or every deposit that was between $4 and $6, apply the filters. It will search through the history and show me everything that matches that parameter between five, four dollars and six dollars. So I'll go ahead and click reset. If I want more details about my account, such as different balance types, most recent activity, interest rate, and interest accrued or interest earned, I can click on the details function. To print out a copy of my statement. I can do that here on the with the printer tab. If I want to download information, I can download it into an Excel spreadsheet, a comma delimited spreadsheet, into the Microsoft OFX platform, into Quicken QFX, or a QuickBooks QBO. So these file types, there's no charge for this, but you can download any of the inf information that you want and use that within your own accounting software. 
If we go over here to the settings function, one of the new features is alerts. So we can go into the alerts, and there are different kinds of alerts that are available. You can do a date alert, and this is not specifically banking, but really for your own information about upcoming birthdays, anniversaries, we can send you an alert to remind you of those. We have account alerts, history alerts, alerts about online transaction activity, and non-online transaction activity, as well as security alerts. So if I wanted to look at an online transaction alert, I can pick and choose what kind of activity I want to be notified about. So anytime somebody uploads an ACH batch onto this account number, and what kind of activity it was, maybe, maybe the item failed, and I want to be notified that a payment that I think went through has had to be, um, has to be resubmitted because it did fail for some reason. If I want to do a history alert and I want to be notified about a certain activity, I can choose my account. And let's say I want to be notified when a certain check number comes through. And I can be notified by a phone number. And I'll ask them to send that immediately. So as soon as that comes in, you can get that text message. And once you agree to the terms, then you can save it. If you have alerts that are coming through that you no longer need, I can click here. I can do an edit. And I can then delete that alert. Also in the settings function, change password. You can set home page preferences. You can set account preferences. Account preferences allows you to change nicknames. So if I don't like this name that's showing up on through online banking currently, I can click here and I can change my nickname account. Put anything in there that you need to help you verify which account you're looking at and then click the check mark and that will change it on that front page for you. Another place that you'll want to review are security preferences. Security preferences are how you get the secure access code. So if I clicked here on secure delivery, it would show you which um, text numbers and voice numbers that I am receiving my secure access code on. So if you would click there, once you get in, you can then verify which um, phone numbers you are getting your secure access code to. It is recommended not to use email for secure access code delivery as email is not a completely secure platform. If you need to go back to account summary and if you need to do a quick search, let's say that we wanted to search for um, a specific dollar amount. So if I wanted to pull up all the $5 items. And if this, had a check, if this had a check image, you could click here and pull up the check image immediately. So instead of having to search through, you can then look for a specific amount and pull up that item and view that check image. Also within online banking, you can do transfers. Transfers are real time between DDA and savings and money market accounts. So I would come in here into funds transfer and find my from account and my to account. Choose my dollar amount and then click transfer funds. And it would transfer those funds for you. And then it would take you into the transaction section to the activity center. The activity center is where all of your online activity resides. So anything that you do in the activity center, uh, anything that you do online shows through the activity center and gives you information about how the transaction was done. It'll give you a tracking reference number. Anytime that you're in online banking, and you have finished your session, always remember to click Log Off, and that will take you back to www.ucbi.com. As a follow-up, if you have any questions, you can 
direct your browser to business and online mobile banking. There's lots of information about how to use the system. And you'll be also have access to email and to our uh, 1-800 number for Treasury Management Support. So we thank you for banking with United Community Bank, and we look forward to serving you. Thank you.